Hi, I'm Dr. Jeremy Neal, and uh, this is a presentation about the life and ideas of St. Augustine. St. Augustine was uh, an extraordinary uh, father of the Christian Church. He lived in the 4th century AD, born in 354 and died in 430. He was a Roman, and he lived at a time when the Roman Empire was uh, entering a period of decline. So by Augustine's time, Aristotle's ideas had been around for 700 years, Plato's for nearly 800. And so Augustine's life and times represent a period in Christian history when Christian theology uh, in the person of Augustine was was tied to platonic ways of thinking, so a platonic philosophical framework. At any rate, his life is an extraordinary one. He uh, was born to a mother who was a Christian named Monica and a father who was a pagan named Patricius. He was initially uh, not a Christian, uh, although raised as one, he became a kind of a, a seeker, perhaps an agnostic, um, but he became a, uh, a Manichaean for a period of time or was a Manichaean sympathizer and then acquired uh, characteristics of a Neoplatonic worldview before he converted to Christianity. Once he converted to Christianity, he became uh, the most important uh, Western or Latin father of the Christian church and likely the most important Christian theologian uh, in all of Christian history after the Apostle Paul. Augustine's uh, Neoplatonism is an important part of his legacy for the Christian church. So uh, Augustine adopted uh, Platonic ways of thinking and incorporated them into Christian theology. The two most widely read of his works that do this are the Confessions and the City of God. The Confessions is kind of a biographical work, which talks a little bit about Augustine's uh, life and his faith journey. The City of God is an attempt to figure out, it's a work of political philosophy and also an attempt to figure out how is it how it is that uh, God could be allowing the social order in Augustine's day to uh, be declining. So I mentioned earlier that Augustine lived during the Roman Empire. And uh, in his day, the Roman Empire was actually entering a period of decline. And so uh, what was going on was a lot of uh, pagans, there were still pagans during his day, uh, they were saying that it was Christianity that was causing this decline because Christianity teaches virtues of peace and love, kindness, generosity, humility. And it doesn't teach uh, warlike virtues. And Augustine wrote the City of God as an attempt to uh, refute these critics and to argue that, in fact, actually, the decline of the Roman Empire had nothing to do with the uh, development of Christian moral thinking in the hearts and minds of the people. Um, as I mentioned, Augustine uh, was from Africa, from North Africa. He uh, moved to Carthage as a young man and studied rhetoric there. And then he journeyed to Rome where he briefly taught uh, young men who were aspiring to political careers before he eventually became a professor of rhetoric in Milan, which is today in Northern Italy. Uh, he was converted to Christianity in Milan and experienced an extraordinary change of life. It was really uh, quite remarkable, the change that Augustine underwent from his early life of uh, loose, ra rakish living to his later life of, um, of piety, devotion, and good deeds. Uh, Augustine, after he converted to Christianity, returned to North Africa, where uh, we learn in the Confessions, um, he was uh, a committed Christian. Uh, his uh, son, Adiodatus, uh, was uh, unfortunately uh, only only lived a short life uh, and Augustine after his death um, took up a position as uh, a priest in the city of Hippo. He was appointed the Bishop of Hippo in Northern Africa and spent the rest of his life writing 
teaching, reading, uh, doing works of service, and leaving an extraordinary legacy for later generations philosophically. Augustine's Confessions, which is the book that we read in this, uh, in this segment, uh, is an, very, uh, an extraordinary work and a very interesting uh, work of biographical insight. Uh, it was written when Augustine was in his uh, early 40s. Uh, it is a very deep, penetrating psychological work. Um, it is also at the same time a theological work, and Augustine uses his life and his experiences as described in the Confessions as kind of a concrete uh, microcosm to explore a variety of different uh, psychological, a uh, variety of different spiritual uh, and, and philosophical ideas. Perhaps the most famous uh, sentence in the Confessions comes in the opening paragraph in Book One, which says famously uh, as a prayer to God, you have made us for yourself and our heart is restless until it rests in you. And Augustine says here that human beings are made for, for relationship, made for a, an opportunity to be in communion with God. And so human beings are not going to find satisfaction until they are in communion with God. Um, Often a contemporary vernacular description of this is that we have a God-shaped hole. And the idea is simply that we have certain desires, needs, um, etc. And God is the fulfillment of those desires and needs. And we're not going to actually find or achieve happiness until we uh, submit ourselves to God as the fulfillment of all our desires and needs. In Book One of the Confessions, Augustine develops an understanding of who and what God is. Throughout the Confessions, in fact, he uh, articulates this understanding. And these ideas that of Augustine's, although they're not really original to him, he's more of a synthesizer of the ideas of others than he is really an original thinker. But these ideas of Augustine's can be summarized in terms of four uh, omni-attributes as ways of characterizing God. So one is omnipotence, namely God is all-powerful. Uh, this doesn't mean that God can do uh, everything, so there are certain things that God cannot do. Uh, God doesn't, uh, can't sin, for instance. God can't tell a lie. Um, God, God uh, many would say God can't reconcile um, logical, uh, logically irreconcilable things, like an unstoppable force and an immovable object or something like that. Uh, another um, omni-attribute of God is God's omniscience. God is all-knowing, according to Augustine. He uh, knows everything. That doesn't mean he knows everything, literally. He, again, he doesn't know how to sin. Uh, he perhaps might ha ha not have knowledge of counterfactuals. Uh, and there are perhaps some other things that he doesn't know how to do. But basically, it means that God knows everything else. God is omnipresent. He is present everywhere in at least a a baseline sense, and he is all good or omnibenevolent as well. Augustine is deeply pessimistic about his own personal psychology in the Confessions. He characterizes himself in the Confessions as an undisciplined child with an undisciplined character and a disorderly mind. He seems to have very strong uh, sexual lusts throughout much of the early books of the Confessions, and this is a source of great consternation to him as he looks back on his life uh, and on his youth. One key incident that occurs in the Confessions is the story of the stolen pears. Augustine analyzes this in book two. Basically what happens is that Augustine and some friends of his climb a fence, they steal some pears, they throw the pears to the pigs. Uh, these are not pears that they eat, not pears that he has any desire to use for some use value. Rather, the key uh, incident here is that the pears are uh, stolen solely for the sake of stealing, solely so that Augustine can uh, experience this uh, thrill of stealing. And for Augustine, this is a key incident. The reason why it's a key incident is because Augustine thinks that this stealing of the pears is characteristic of 
uh, humans everywhere, not pair stealing in particular, but the key incident of um, of doing evil for the sake of evil. And Augustine, on this basis, concludes that human beings have an orientation towards evil. We desire or tend to do evil. And he says that this can be characterized as or described as a doctrine of original sin. In other words, we have a, uh, a disease or, or a kind of a, a malady of uh, sinfulness or an orientation towards evil. And Augustine's a deeply pessimistic thinker. He's deeply pessimistic about this and he thinks that this malady or this disease uh, will orient us towards doing destructive deeds, deeds that ultimately lead to physical and spiritual death. Um, Augustine says that original sin and human sinfulness is something that um, involves us in uh, deeply uh, evil activities that orient us away from God. He is, although pessimistic about our ability to save ourselves, nevertheless optimistic about God's ability to save us. So Augustine uh, basically thinks that we need, in order to be rescued from our human condition, we need a rescue mission from outside. Uh, and God has provided us with that rescue mission in the form of uh, the person of Jesus of Nazareth. God has sent himself. Um, and Jesus of Nazareth rescues us in uh, acts of grace. So uh, Jesus dies on the cross, and if we accept that death on our behalf, then uh, we will be justified in God's eyes. Um, and in order to accept that justification, we can't save ourselves. So Augustine thinks that uh, we need a sort of a, an enabling grace that God imparts to all persons. Uh, one might call that prevenient grace. Uh, that's a, a, just a technical term for the, the grace that all persons receive in order to be able to accept justifying grace. And then there is sanctifying grace, a third step in the rescue mission after prevenient and justifying grace. And sanctifying grace can, uh, can improve our wills and improve our moral character. Um, Augustine grapples very uh, heavily with a major problem in the Confessions, and that problem is called the problem of evil. Basically, it is this. If God has the kinds of characteristics that Augustine thinks God has, namely omnipotence and omniscience, omnibenevolence as well, God is all good, then how is it that there is evil? How is it that evil is a thing? Uh, if God is wholly good uh, and capable of doing all things and knows all things, then why is evil around? This is not a problem just for Augustine. It's a problem for all Christian theologians who view God as having these characteristics. Um, Augustine, first of all, uh, reasons in the confessions that evil is not God's creation, since everything that God created is good. Um, so evil is just not something that God created. And in fact, actually, he thinks that evil is not a thing. He thinks it is a lack or a privation of that which is good. Augustine also thinks, though, that the key to solving the problem of evil is through um, human free will. Um, so he thinks that humans are uh, the exercisers of free will, that God has allowed us to have free will, and that that exercise of free will uh, is something that we have chosen to use badly. And God has allowed this to happen because God believes that our having free will is, is a great good, uh, much better than if we were just automatons. And our use of our free will is something that uh, has resulted in, uh, in evil because we have chosen against God and chosen in favor of, uh, of, of the wrong way of living. Uh, and so this is Augustine's explanation for how evil has come about. Uh, fortunately, as mentioned earlier, though, God's grace can free us. Uh, from the bondage that we have created for ourselves through the exercise of our will and our orientation towards evil. So Augustine is not thoroughly pessimistic uh, at the end of the day. Uh, although he is pessimistic about our ability to save ourselves, he's not thoroughly pessimistic about God's ability to save us. In fact, he's quite optimistic and thinks that God will, um, God can provide a way out of the sin and the evil into which we have fallen. Uh, Augustine himself in the Confessions converts to Christianity very famously in uh, 
Book eight, uh, he hears a child's voice as he's sitting in a garden. The child is playing a game and the child says, take up and read as part of this game. And Augustine takes up the Christian scriptures and, and he reads uh, Romans, uh, the book of Romans. And uh, he realizes that he's got to give up his life of sin. And he's finally psychologically capable of doing this. His is a kind of a moral conversion. And so Augustine, uh, after this uh, experience in Book 8 of the Confessions, it's definitely worth a good read, uh, decides to accept Christian moral teachings, especially Christian moral teachings about uh, Augustine's uh, sexual appetites, namely that he should curb them and restrict them to, um, to spe uh, the special relationship of marriage uh, designated by God. And Augustine, as a result of this, uh, becomes a, a Christian, not just intellectually, but also morally. All in all, Augustine is an extraordinary thinker and certainly a very influential uh, theologian, influential philosopher, and uh, worth a good read.